So you want to make the ultimate character portrait, but you're not an artist. You have no idea what makes a portrait look good, look great, or look awesome. And you don't even know where to start. What the hell? Where do we go? What do we do? This is why you should be watching this show, proudly brought to you by Portrait Workshop. Hello and welcome to this very first, very special bringing your character to life as brought to you by Portrait Workshop. Now, joining me today for this very first episode, I have the creator of Portrait Workshop and one of the great artists that has been bringing this to life. So, Darren, thank you for joining us and uh, for bringing us this great piece of software. And Juliana, thank you for joining us and making all of the art easy so we don't have to stress. Anyway, I hope you guys are both doing very well. Great, thank you. And glad to glad to get the chance to uh, show this to everyone. Absolutely. Yeah. Juliana, you're from Brazil, is that right? Yep, that's correct. Absolutely. And you studied art, so you you're the professional here. <laughs> one of the many <laughs> that's right because it's a team of people who've been put together to to, to bring mm -hmm. this together so briefly um darren if someone doesn't know what portrait workshop is in a nutshell what is it sure so portrait workshop is a mobile app that makes it really easy to create great character portraits for fantasy characters whether it's a PC that you're playing and you want something for your character sheet, whether it's a NPC or a, a hundred NPCs that you want to populate your world, it makes it really easy from your mobile device in just a matter of minutes to create one or a bunch of portraits and tap into the, the talent of our team of artists, uh, international team of artists, uh, we're, we're in four continents, I believe, uh, and uh, uh, really bring that, uh, that artistic vision to your characters. Oh, fantastic. Absolutely. And we're going to be showing you some of that. Uh, well, we're going to be showing you Portrait Workshop in action throughout this video. Now, we're talking specifically today about the basics of the face. And I know that my basic face is an oval with some little ovals and then a line and a stripe. <laughs> and maybe if I'm feeling arty, I'll put a beard on, which is a squiggly line. Um, Darren, in terms of, of where you guys began in terms of putting together a face, in portrait mm -hmm. workshop where did you guys start yeah it's a great question um and uh one of the things i find is really interesting is uh, i almost view our our users as in two categories there's those that really go into this thinking i want to draw a face uh, i really want to show the character of the person i'm doing uh, and are very very focused on the visuals um and then there's also uh, plenty of folks that you know they're the fighter he's got a sword and shield he's in plate armor I guess I need a face in there somewhere. Um, but regardless of where you start out, one of the things we would find very quickly is uh, it conveys a lot of the personality of your character. And even the hair, good example. You know, a lot of people, who cares about hair? I guess I need hair or whatever. As soon as you see a face and hair, it, um, it really tells you a lot about the person you're looking at. And so when we started on it, we really looked at a very broad range and said, you know, what are the archetypes that we're trying to support? What pieces do we need to make that work? And even taking a step back, one of our goals from day one was to be very inclusive. So this isn't just about white guys. You know, what does what do faces look like for men, women, non-binary? What do they look like for you know Asian or or white or black or non-humans? And how do those pieces work together? Because if you're a half elf, what's the other half? You know, maybe it, maybe you're half elf, half Samoan. Um, and so really, I think the big thing we started at was looking at the full range that we wanted to cover. Uh, because we wanted to bring that broad palette to our users to be able to make characters which don't necessarily all look like white Hollywood actors. Okay, so let's start by let's start by choosing that then. Uh, Juliana, what sort of what sort of person would you like us to to, to make today, or try and try and encapsulate? Put you on the spot. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Actually, no, I'm gonna because I did the art for it, so I'm gonna kind of took my own horn here. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love an Asian character okay. because we have some great armor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll be looking at armor in another episode, but we've got to start somewhere, right? Uh, of so, course. So I'm going to, at what age? Uh, let's go with, you know, actually our favorite one to play with really mm -hmm. is 
the oldest. Uh, <laughs> so old would be a good one. And Asian, male or female, or non-binary. Hmm. Let's go with male. Male. Okay. Male, Asian, and uh, so human, I suppose. Uh, and mm -hmm. then Asian. All right there we go. All right, so it's just generating a whole bunch of portraits for us, but we don't want to use we don't want to use a generated portrait. We want to make our own. So I'm going to select this bloke here because we're going to change up everything anyway. And there's definitely a tone that's been set here. There's definitely an attitude. I think obviously a fighter with that sword. Um, but yes, let's let's deconstruct this. Right. Okay. That's that's neutralish. Mm -hmm. We're starting mm -hmm. with the eyes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. What do you think about when when you think about eyes? Well, kind of like how Darren has mentioned before, we are trying to tell a story with each of these characters. Mm. Uh, we have mentioned before that actually you did when you mentioned that with cartoons, you usually want to make the eyes larger, especially if the character is younger or anything like that. But one of the things that we're also taking into consideration uh, with this app is that, you know, like when we're talking about Asians, they could still be, you know, like half this, half that. So we don't have to go for a very specific set of eyes. We can, you know, try different things. Uh, so with a character like this, uh, let's see, I would actually look at the overall expression I want them to have. And that's how I would select the eyes. Okay. Okay. Uh, shall we say that this is a, a good natured friendly old warrior who's going to teach our PC something about life. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in that case, then what sort of eyes would we look at? Do we, do we go with the sort of the, the more wizened sunken eyes? Darren, what are your thoughts in terms of, of eyes? Yeah, I would think probably, you know, more open eyes, although something which, you know, again, doesn't feel like we're putting Caucasian eyes necessarily on an Asian face. Right. Um, Again, that's that's also a, a fine combination. So you know, something kind of in the middle, perhaps. Uh, you you know, you're trying to avoid. Uh, if you're trying to be friendly, you're generally trying to avoid you know real squinty you know, or or really alarmed at the other extreme. So um, go back up to the top. I think there's a couple there that might be particularly good top. fit. Let's go back up to the top. There we go. You know, and actually, two more rows down. Oh, he's got a specific choice going somewhere <laughs> here. <laughs> so, uh, Juliana, you may have your own favorites. Uh, my, my, the one that's in the lower left, I think, is kind of a you know interesting older uh, older set of eyes that, that still kind of has that, that open in intensity to them. Uh, yeah, but, I like that one too. The lower left. So, I'm going to put that at the bottom of your screen now. Hopefully, yeah. is that the lower left? The one yeah. on the left. He said, "I'm looking at it reverse." So, bear with me, folks. So, I'm going to tap <laughs> it and hope. Is that the right one? Yeah, the joys of streaming. There we go. So, All right. Or actually, the upper left now, the, the new one that just showed up. <laughs> this one? That's the go. fun part. So many choices. <laughs> so yeah, many choices. Good. All right. That's so his good. eyes are, are pretty open. They're not that malicious closed. They're not sort of squinting. Do the eyebrows mm -hmm. have much of an effect? When we look at eyebrows, should we bring in some eyebrows? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Eyebrows can be a lot of expression. I'll let Juliana talk about that some. Got some serious eyebrows going on here. <laughs> we have a lot of fun with them. Um, well, I mean, as a kid, I used to be able to do like the rock thing. So, if there's anybody from the US watching, like, so oh. eyebrows are such a big thing, right? Like, they can tell you what you're feeling. Um, I mean, eyes do the big work, but also <laughs> eyebrows help so much. So, we have a ton of different things. Kind of have the rock eyebrow because it's the smoldering look, right? It's kind of in that one if you if you see yep. the bottom left. All right, so we're gonna go with the rock then, uh, the smolder. <laughs> okay, so that's that's eyes. Um, do we do we do we? Oh, let me let me rephrase that so it's in English. Um, when you're you're working on a face. Do you kind of lock down, okay, this is eyes, this is eyebrows, and then you make the rest of the face work around that? Or are you guys a bit more 
sort of dynamic going, well, those eyes worked when we were thinking about this, but now that nose doesn't work or this mouth doesn't work. Are you quite agile when it when it comes to that? Or is that a bad approach and you're going to end up with a Picasso uh, because <laughs> it's just everywhere? Uh, or is it better to choose and fix a feature and work around that feature? Um, for myself, I, I find that um, one of the things you'll notice with the app is we always show you a complete portrait. We never just show yeah. you a nose by itself. And a big part of that is I don't really think it's possible to know how something's going to look out of context. You really have to see it on a face to know. So um, I'm often, uh, for myself, when I'm designing a specific portrait, I'll pick a couple of features that I think are really kind of the, the linchpins, design the rest. And then sometimes, now that I see the rest of the face, oh, actually, I do want to change those. Mm. Um, so uh, I think it's it's good to kind of start with what you think you want to do, but don't be totally locked in because, again, there are so many choices. And uh, again, by simply scrolling through them, we now see, okay, how does, yeah, how do these things work together very quickly? And it's, it's very informative. What, what, what part would we, would you like to work on next, Juliana? Nose, mouth, uh, ears? I think the way that we're actually doing it right now, it feels very much like how a user would do it. Right. And like Darren was saying, like basically you pick something and then you see that something else might work a little bit better with it. Mm. So for me, actually, the next feature would be hair. Mm. And I'm not saying that because it's one of my favorite things to draw, but just because hair can actually help set up so many other things. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have like me bangs that are falling over your eyes, you know, mm. maybe the eyes won't matter as much, or maybe you do need that nose to stand up or stand out, sorry. <laughs> Got you, okay. Well, already, I mean, you just look at these different hairstyles and the character changes so dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, w why do you like drawing hair? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, well, okay, so I grew up with magical girls <laughs> and they've been my everything for such a long time. And I mean, you can't look at Sailor Moon or any other show without thinking about hair. Right. <laughs> right. And so I think that's where the love started. So I see there's quite a cultural, some of the hairstyles to me sort of immediately screams the right culture. Um, if I, if I go back, so this one at the, uh, let's see, let's see, there was this one here with the sort of the, the knot on top. So, oh, mm -hmm. I've tapped it already. That one. Oops. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. Um, I thought that one sort of worked quite well. Um, mm -hmm. the, the hair being tied up, that shows someone who's sort of aware, or it's a, it's a status symbol, wouldn't it? That hair being tied up like that, because it's not keeping the hair out of the face, because he's mm -hmm. still got hair on the face. Oh, I, I mean, I'm preaching the choir. Juliana, take us through this hairstyle. You like hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, interesting enough, this is actually one of the first hairs that we did. Mm -hmm. um, so what we try to do is a couple of things. We are working with kind of like a mannequin. So there's nothing on it except the face. Sometimes we don't even have the ears when we're working on it. And so we try to tell a story with it. You know, like this guy, um, he's part of a tribe of people who have their hair up top. And that's important to them. But then maybe he has a younger son who doesn't have that top knot because he's not there yet. He's not, you know, a warrior or, you know, just younger or anything like that. So all of these little parts can tell a really big story. The nose. What would we do about the nose? Should we look at the nose quickly? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So let's go to the nose. And uh, where is it here? Nose. So this is now running through the various noses. And and um, we're not restricted to any particular group of noses. It's just giving us all different groups. Mm -hmm. And we can then pick and choose. Yeah, it's it? generally the ones that it thinks are a reasonable fit first. So we've said this is an Asian character. So you're going to see noses that are a little more reasonable there. But it very quickly says, you know, we're not trying to restrict you. So you can get a... A very very wide range of noses. You know, some of the really skinny ones would be a little less typical. Um, but uh, but again, you know, it's, what do you view this character as looking like? Um, and one of the things which we're going to be adding soon here with some of the scars uh, uh, pack uh, around the time we release the app uh, is even broken noses. You know, you want to do the uh, the Owen Wilson nose, for right. example, uh, uh, which also you know can add some interesting uh, interesting character. Absolutely, absolutely. So if we look at these, if we just look at these six noses that are on screen 
now. Mm -hmm. The the top left, I suppose, is quite an open nose. It doesn't. It's not. It's not particularly distinct. It's not sharp. It's just. It's just a nose. Whereas the bottom right has that quite prominent sort of nodule on the on the tip, quite a, a pointed nose. Mm -hmm. Apart from sort of showing us the 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 the, um, the the sort of the area or the genetics of the family that they grew up or that came from. Do noses show us anything else? I mean, a broken nose gives us character, but if we look at those six noses, is it just about an aesthetic going, well, that one fits better or, or that one fits better? With certain characters, you're going to see that the nose actually helps set up the cheekbones. Mm -hmm. And so it actually messes with the structure of the face a lot more than you would originally think, uh, especially while you're scrolling through this. Uh, there's a couple of them that, like you said, they fit very well. Mm. But one of the parts that I think a lot of people don't think of is the bridge of the nose. Like this part actually like helps set up the rest of the face and gives you a little bit more of, you know, attitude or sometimes, you know, like maybe subdues the character a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing how each different component of a face can do mm -hmm. so much change. So, you know, given where we're trying to go with this particular one, um, you know, if we're saying this is sort of a friendly but uh, older and very skilled warrior who's going to be teaching, you know, bringing a certain intensity that may make some sense. Um, right. So, you know, we're talking about the lines, you know, can kind of reinforce that. Um, so, you know, again, I think what I would generally say is it's pretty quick. Look through them, find the one that just sort of connects with what it is you're trying to get across. Uh, and I think if that's what you're trying to get across, I think that's a good choice. I mean, this this guy's certainly looking like, you know, fairly intense, but not angry, not intimidating uh, warrior who's been around and has something to offer. Is there anything mm -hmm. left, really? Mouth, I think. Uh, so so when we look at the mouth, again, are there, are there, is it, is it, is it, is it well, I mean, that question is answered just by these six portraits, <laughs> I think. Um, a wide mouth, is that more friendly usually? What what do mouths tell us? Any any thoughts on that? I do think that with kind of going off of the point that we were talking about before, there's no actual right or wrong. It actually does go a lot more by preference. Uh, one of the things about drawing this is that you'd be surprised what reference we use with some of these. <laughs> So um, sometimes we're using, you know, like an actor who is very well known for playing, you know, like an action hero or anything. And his features or her features, like they're not what you would expect. Uh, so again, no right or wrong with lips, nothing like that. I would say that if we are trying to get, you know, like a more friendly character, though, definitely if there's a hint of a, sm of a smile or anything towards that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think also we tend to think of, of luscious lips as, or at least I do anyway, of being the purview of the young because there's, mm -hmm. there's that sort of that um, youthfulness, I guess, whereas the older you get, the, the more your lips sink in and you get those, those Yoda mouth, basically. Um, I don't know how else to describe it. So you, you were wanting a sort of a smile. This top, top left one seems to have a, a bit of a slight mm -hmm. smile to it um mm -hmm. okay so we get it i mean that's that's pretty good already the last mm -hmm. thing i guess would be the facial hair mm -hmm. because he has some but we maybe it's the wrong it's the wrong one got some sean connery going on in there that's quite cool <laughs> so you like drawing hair do you like drawing facial hair juliana <laughs> I do, but I don't actually do it that much because I mostly do draw girls and usually they're <laughs> younger because magical girls, but it is fun. <laughs> Does he need to have facial hair? Because there's the one where he doesn't, where he's just got these mean sideburns, I think, this 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 mm -hmm. one here. Yeah, if this was a, you know, modern person of this type, um, then, you know, you might say, okay, this is what they would look like if you're if you're bringing up your history books and saying, okay, I'm trying to model somebody from the 15th century, such and such period. It might look like this, um, and then it's fantasy. So, I mean, you know, female dwarves can have beards if you want to. Right, um, right, absolutely. So, so, to some degree, I would say it's uh, how closely are you following a specific human culture? 
So for example, you know, is this is this person modeled very closely on the Chinese, for example, or the Japanese, not quite the same thing, obviously. Um, is it something you're making up yourself? And so it contains elements of a number of things. And that's a very common fantasy trope of, um, you know, these these folks are modeled very much on the Edo period Japanese, but uh, they, uh, they all have magic and they like to dress in red and they have fire around all over the place. And that's kind of their unique signifier. Right. So this... So facial hair is actually one of those that it may be a way to, to say, this group of people in my world, uh, this is this is one of the things that makes them very different. They all have luxurious beards or they're all clean shaven. And um, especially when you start seeing more than one character, they, you, your, your brain is very good at finding patterns. And so recognizing two different groups of people by this, this characteristic that really identifies them can be part of that. So again, in this case, uh, I know this is a very repeated theme, there's no right and wrong. It's, you know, what is your mental image and which of these really speaks to that? And to some degree, which one just looks cool? Right, right. I think this one works. Sorry, I'm looking at my, I'm not, I'm listening to you. I'm being very rude. I'm listening to you, but I'm playing on my phone. Uh, well, you're having, <laughs> using portrait workshop, how dare you? <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay, so I think that's pretty cool in terms of the character. Mm -hmm. yeah. As this, this wizened old... And they're not too wizened. I mean, he, he, he looks like he's certainly going to kick your ass. I mean, this is not someone that you're going to muck around with. Think what you're trying to convey. Try to make a, a character that, that shows that, that communicates that non-verbally, because that's much more engaging. But also learn from the portrait you create. Uh, almost every time I create a portrait, even if I have a very specific person in mind, there's some detail about it that kind of sparks my imagination. And I feel like I know the character better once I see that. So be open to what you see as well. There you go. All right, guys. Well, yeah, it's taken us a little bit longer than than we thought, but that's that's okay because we've got something now that looks really good and looks far better than I could ever have hoped to draw it personally. <laughs> so there we are. We'll be back next uh, in the next episode, I should say, where we now start to take it to the next level. We start to advance looking at the class and the history of the character and attitudes and things like that. But uh, stay with. Oh well, come back. For that one, uh, you'll be notified, obviously, in social media. Until then, big thank you to Darren and uh, to you, Juliana, for joining us today and sharing your insight and wisdom. Uh, so thank, thank you very you. much. And a big thank you to you for watching today's show. I hope you found this insightful. When uh, we decided to do this show, this character building series, we thought, well, how best to present it? And hopefully giving you insight into the the I, the mind of an artist in terms of how to go about creating your character. Anyway, until next time, from myself and Portrait Workshop, I wish you and yours the very happiest of character creation. <laughs>